Hi everyone and welcome to today's interview, which is not an interview. Unfortunately, I was stood up twice by this person that was supposed to come on today and it's now afternoon here and I have about 10 hours, 12 hours to produce a video for you guys. So since I'm having to wing it, I'm going to do it with something that I can easily talk about and it has come to my knowledge a few times because people have been telling me that Diabetes Australia is a very good target for what we're going to talk about now. Since we have uh, been looking at Diabetes UK, their website, and we have been looking at Diabetes New Zealand before, they're both appalling. And now I am going to have a look at Diabetes Australia. Now, I haven't had a lot of time to prepare, so we're just going to hop into their website and see what they actually have going on there. So bear with me and I will share this screen with you. So this will be interesting, I think. Okay, so here we are at Diabetes Australia's website. A few things going on here, but what I'm going to look at because when someone goes to this page and they want they clearly want some information most people are going there because they have been diagnosed with diabetes they want to know what they can do about it and how they should be eating or how they can reverse this disease so let's have a little look at about diabetes type 2 diabetes. Let's see what they have to say about that. So they say that type 2 diabetes is a progressive condition in which the body becomes resistant to the normal effects of insulin and or gradually loses the capacity to produce enough insulin in the pancreas. We do not know what's, what causes type 2 diabetes. That's bullshit. Type 2 diabetes is associated with modifiable lifestyle risk factors. Type 2 diabetes also has strong genetic and family-related risk factors. That's very interesting, uh, whereas I think to some degree that is true. Some uh, people that come from cultures that have been you know, protected from the normal society for many years and have, up until very recently, just been able to thrive out of eating normal food, unprocessed foods, they are going to be more susceptible to type 2 diabetes because storing fat and uh, just, you know, the whole obesity problem, the everything that has to go with that has just been beneficial because they haven't got sick from it. Like people who are now living in this modern society many of us have lived this way for quite some time having said that i have genes from both sides so on my dad's side he was from ecuador and all my family lived up in the mountains so they would eat a lot of corn but it would be basically some vegetables some meats etc and all natural no processed crap up until very recently which has, has devastating effects on many people in my family, distant relatives to me, because I don't really know them and I don't speak Spanish. But I have heard the stories, people dying at very young age at, of cancer and getting the diabetes, quite a, many of them. Um, on my mum's side, I know that my mum is one of four siblings and two of those have type 2 diabetes as well. So I probably have those genes. However, I don't think that means that I'm going to get type 2 diabetes. Why do I say that? Because I know what is causing type 2 diabetes. It's not unknown. Sure, there are theories about fat being able to cause type 2 diabetes, but that's uh, under certain conditions. Fat on its own is not going to do that. Carbohydrates, on the other hand, especially sugar or fructose on its own, will cause diabetes, even if you don't have fat. So can we just, you know, Diabetes Australia, can we just skip that bullshit and admit that we actually do know what is causing diabetes? I think it's appalling that you don't tell people the truth. 
we need to operate in the best of interest of diabetics and those people that are going to develop diabetes over the coming years, those people that are still undiagnosed. We need to serve those people, let them know what the hell is going on. If we keep lying to people, saying that we don't know what's causing it, it's fine if you want to eat sugar up until the point where you have diagnosed diabetes and then you can just eat a little bit of that. That, that, That's crazy. It's like telling people with lung cancer, if you think that lung cancer is caused by smoking, say, nah, you know, up until, you know, if you don't have lung cancer yet, you can keep doing it. And then when you get diagnosed, yeah, yeah, maybe you'll just cut down a bit. It's no good, is it? Come on. Get a grip. Start actually telling the bloody truth. Okay. Um, so apparently type 2 diabetes represent 85 to 90 percent of all cases of diabetes. That's why we always talk about that. If you're type 1 diabetic, what I'm saying is going to apply to you as well to some degree. The difference is that your diabetes is not caused by sugar. Your diabetes is caused by an autoimmune disease, which could be, um, you know, sugar might be one of the components in there, but not on its own. However, you still cannot metabolize sugar without exogenous insulin because you don't produce any insulin. Most type 2 diabetics produce some sort of, in, uh, some degree of insulin. Some need injections, other people can do well with metformin or something else that will help balance that out. However, cutting out the sugar, going low carb is beneficial for any bloody type of diabetes. But of course, the problem with diabetes is that we cannot metabolize or use the sugar or the carbohydrates in our diet. So that is just making sense. Right. Um, Usually develops in adults over the age of 45 years, but is increasingly occurring in younger age groups, including children, adolescents, and young adults. Yeah, figure why. How much soda does people that age drink? That is something that is very, very different between the UK and Sweden, where I am from originally. So I moved to the UK about 12 years ago. And then I went to university in the UK where I studied with a lot of uh, young people, 20 year olds, 22, that sort of age. And even 19 year olds, anyway. Not a bloody soul is drinking water. What's wrong with people? In Sweden, we drink a lot of water. Most people I know, they drink water. If they have a water bottle with them, it's full of water. In the UK, you have some co- some kind of cordial or soda, juice, whatever, but no one is drinking water. And that is just, to me, like, mind-blowing. I don't know what it's like here in New Zealand. I don't really know any people that age. I think that is probably more towards the uk lifestyle here. I'm not um, entirely sure about that, though. But if you're not drinking water... Suck it up, drink some water, get used to it. Water is what we should be drinking. And then we can get uh, into whether we want to, you know, supplements with other things like minerals, etc. But, you know, I I don't know. I rest my case, but don't drink your fructose. Please don't do it. Uh, (laughs) For some, the first sign uh, may be a complication of diabetes, such as a heart attack, vision problems, or a foot ulcer. And that just shows you how tolerant we are to these kind of diseases in the society that we live in. There are other signs well before that that people are ignoring. What about, I mean, this goes for me as well. I used to, when I was studying nutrition, this was before I moved to the UK, when I used to eat much more carbohydrates, I used to eat six times per day. I used to basically follow the nutritional guidelines, more or less. Um, I could not stay awake during my lectures. And it wasn't because they were boring. I was genuinely really interested in what they had to say most of the time. And 20, 30 minutes into a one-hour lecture, 
yes, you fell asleep almost every single time. And that's just a lack of, you know, I, I thought, okay, I need to eat more arsen to balance my blood sugar. No, the opposite is true. I needed to teach my body how to burn fat for fuel so that I have constant energy and not shutting down like I'm doing if I'm carb dependent because then I need to eat it all the bloody time. And that is something that I think is a very early sign that people should be looking out for. Are you tired in the afternoons? It means that you're a sugar burner. Are you? If you're a sugar burner, you're probably not eating the right diet and you're probably having too much insulin in your bloodstream going up and down, up and down throughout the day together with your blood sugar doing the opposite of what the insulin is doing. So things like that, you know, come on. It, it's just common sense. It's so simple that I do not understand why people don't understand. So I'm hoping that unless I'm, you know, just singing to the choir here, and if you're new here, that you actually take this seriously, listen to what I have to say, and cut out all sugar from your diet, and preferably also go low carb, especially if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, or if you think that you might be, okay? Uh, right, so let's see. And then they have what causes type 2 diabetes here. So let's see what they have to say. It runs in the family. Okay, yeah, sure. While people might have a strong genetic disposition towards type 2 diabetes, the risk is generally increased if people display a number of modifiable lifestyle factors, including high blood pressure, overweight or obesity, insufficient physical activity, poor diet, and the classic apple-shaped body where extra weight is carried around the waist. Okay. People are at a higher risk of getting type 2 diabetes if they have a family history of diabetes, are older, over 55 years of age, the risk increases with age. Why do you think that is? So let's just stop there for a bit. The older you are, the more time you have had to abuse the inside of yourself with sugar, especially fructose, and the insulin, and you have had more time to burn out your pancreas so that it doesn't even produce enough insulin, or burn out your cells so that they become insulin resistant. That takes time. It's not something that is going to happen in a month. If I, from now, for a month, started to eat a high carb, high sugar diet, I could probably make myself insulin resistant, but that would be reversible. When we do this year in, year out for a very, very long period of time, if you're 55, when did you start doing that? I started at a very young age. And I think most people today do it. Those who are 55 now, maybe they didn't start at a very young age, but it's entirely possible. It's just that it's a lot easier to start eating carbs as, you know, 70, 80% carb diets as a young person today than it was 50 years ago. Okay, uh, da, da, da. if you're over 45 and overweight, are over 45 and have high blood pressure, or are over 35 years of age and are from the Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander background, are over 35 years of age and are from Pacific Island, Indian subcontinent or Chinese cultural background. So, yeah, that's the genetic component of that. And then we have, if you are a woman who has given birth to a child over four and a half kilos, or had gestational diabetes when pregnant, or had a condition known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay. Yeah. So this is probably true, but this is not the cause of diabetes. The cause of all, the cause of polycystic ovarian syndrome is probably very related to the same cause as diabetes. Potentially some other things going on there, but it's, has a lot to do with hormonal dysregulation. Right, so symptoms. Yeah, I suppose we can look at these symptoms because some of them are, are things that you might 
recognize in yourself if you're eating a carb heavy diet being excessively thirsty i have never really um, done that usually the thirst is because you have increased blood sugar over a longer period of time and your body needs to flush it out because it's actually toxic to your body so you want to get rid of that you don't want to walk around with blood sugars up here that's pretty dangerous that's why you're getting thirsty so that's usually only happening in type 1 diabetics where they are not able to get rid of that or when you actually can't either you're so insulin resistant that no, no amount of insulin will help or that your pancreas is starting to fail a bit and you can't produce enough insulin so that's probably more common in type 1 diabetics uh, the same with passing more in urine it's the same thing if you have high blood sugar you your body needs to flush it out with the urine there there's no other way you can get rid of that or is trying to do it anyway feeling tired and lethargic so this is what i was doing so i needed this constant energy in to keep me going and that was because i was running on carbohydrates i could not utilize my fat when i didn't eat something but it can also be that when you're heavily insulin resistant, even if you're eating the carbs, you can't use the carbs as energy. So you're not, since you have carbs there, you're going to have high insulin that is going to prevent you from using fat for fuel. <coughs> Excuse me. And at the same time, your cells are starving because the energy is not going into the cells as they sh as it should because you're insulin resistant. So it will just float around in your blood system and make you know damage all the cells that come into contact with that sugar and you're going to be tired you're going to be really tired because you can't use the energy and high insulin prevents you from using your fat stores so there is no energy coming from anywhere always feeling hungry same reason you're always feeling hungry if you if your cells are starving even if you're eating if it doesn't go in there and can be used as energy you are going to be hungry Having cuts that heal slowly, yeah, that's probably something that comes with quite progressed disease. You wouldn't notice that um, necessarily at an early stage. Itching, skin infections, same thing. You can get fungal infections just because you have so much sugar in your blood. But I would say again that that's probably more the case when it's kind of gone quite far. Same with the blurred vision, uh, gradually putting on weight. Now, this is could be a cause, but usually you put probably put the weight on um, at the same time as you're kind of developing. It's something that you're not going to just overnight all of a sudden going to start putting weight on. What is happening? What was happening for me from the age of twenty to thirty? I almost put on one kilo per year, so like constantly a little bit more because I was eating a lot of carbs and you kind of get used to it. And that is something that just develops slowly together with the disease. It's not, you know, something that we don't really think about, but sure. Mood swings. Yes, that could be because you, your blood sugar is going up and down and you get really moody when your blood sugar is down and you have no energy. Again, headaches. Yes. Um, this is probably one thing that I suffer from a lot. So I think that my headaches, um, headaches seem to be something that goes in my family. My mom had, I mentioned this before, but she, when I was growing up, every morning without fail, she used to take a painkiller because she had headache every morning she woke up. And I'm just thinking about it and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering like, how did she even have a will to live because I find headaches they are so disabling to me I was living with headaches three to four times per week on average for many many years and I put that down to the amount of exercise I was doing because I was working as a personal trainer I was doing a lot of fitness classes of different types um, everything like spinning body pump aerobics core training you name it I was doing it and I thought, you know, it always feels like tension in my neck. So I always thought that it was because I was exercising so much. And I'm not very good at drinking. So I thought, yeah, I'm probably dehydrated. And what did I try to do? I tried to drink a lot and it just goes straight through me. So I gave up on that plan. I stopped drinking because, 
frankly, I wasn't thirsty. I just tried to rehydrate. And at the time, I didn't add any extra salt or something. I'm the same today. My body is just like, you don't actually need that much fluid. And I drink a lot less than what is recommended. I have always done that. And I'm fine. Is it ideal? I don't know. But I don't seem to have any kidney problems. So headaches can be a symptom of hypoglycemia. But it also seems to be something that um, I was talking about it going in my family. So I didn't get to my sister. She had had migraines for years. So I'm actually the one who is best off out of the three of us. Um, now, migraines is something that has been associated with uh, people who have migraines often seem to be having that because they have a problem with metabolizing sugar or glucose in the brain so i find that very very interesting so literally i'm wondering if that is something that could develop with people who actually get diabetes so when they get this problem with you know carbohydrate metabolism in general Obviously, they will get in the brain as well. And will that then start to trigger migraines? I don't know the answer to that, but I find that quite interesting. So if any of you watching this actually know anything about it, feel free to send me an email because I will be very interested in that. Um, feeling dizzy, the next thing. Um, yes, that could also be because um, you have low blood sugar. And then leg cramps. Um, leg cramps wouldn't necessarily be just because of the diabetes but if you have excess sugar and you're going to wee a lot you're going to piss out a lot of electrolytes as well so you're probably low on certain electrolytes which may be sodium potassium magnesium so yeah that could be it we spent a lot of time on this page so let's see what's next um i wonder what prevention oh god that's a lot of things so Let's not do that. Let's have a look at the food because that is a pet peeve of well, mine. Eating well. <laughs> right. Oh, let's start with between meal snacks. They actually want you to snack on diabetes. All right. Between meal snacks. People with diabetes on certain types of tablets or insulin may require one snack between each meal and for supper. However, most people aiming to control their body weight are advised not to have snacks between meals. For specific advice, discuss this with your doctor, dietitian, or creden credential diabetic educator. There are three lots of healthy choices that can be used as a snack food. Select fruit that is in season, apple, banana, peach, pear, three apricots, half a cup of grapes, and one cup of strawberries or a slice of rock melon or watermelon. Okay, mm, a serving of sugar. So, fruits, fresh or tinned fruit. Tinned fruit usually floats around in some bloody sugar syrup, just saying. Uh, frozen fruit, frozen fruit juice, cubes, it's horrible. Uh, one serve of dried fruit. Holy shit. Dried fruit, one serve of dried fruit is a lot of sugar. Why would a diabetic do that? Yeah, have a half a pack of cigarettes as a snack. I, I, I don't get it. They could have vegetable sticks, celery, carrot, capsicum, snow peas with one tablespoon low fat dip. Celery boats filled with two tablespoons of cottage cheese and tomato. That sounds awful. Nuts, 30 grams of mixed or unsalted nuts. So mixed or unsalted. Okay. Breads, one slice of raisin toast or multigrain bread. Again, raisin toast. Even if you think that, you know, multigrain bread is good for you, why would you suggest raisin toast to someone who has diabetes? Just adding extra sugar to the other sugar that you're getting. Dairy, one tub of low-fat yogurt, one cup of low-fat custard. <laughs> low-fat custard is so full of sugar. And a tub of low-fat yogurt, I'm pretty sure that 
most people will go for a fruit yogurt, which is also full of sugar. Cereal, half a cup of high fiber breakfast cereal. Yeah, that's not going to help. Have you ever read the labels of breakfast cereals? Go and have a look at it. Even the healthy ones have sugar and they're almost just carbs. Drinks, low fat flavored milk or soy milk or fruit smoothie. Why flavored? Flavored always has sugar in it. <laughs> Why not just like have a glass of full fat milk? No, low fat flavored milk or soy milk or fruit smoothie. So that's like lots of fruit. And what is fruit? Fruit is lots of sugar and lots and lots of fructose. What is causing diabetes is bloody fructose and sugar. So, you know, here, have a portion of progression for your bloody diabetes. And then we can sell you some meds, maybe. I don't know. Who's sponsoring this shit? Cakes. Why are cakes on there? One small picklet or wholemeal crumpet with one teaspoon of jam. Yes, we need the jam on there as well. One small fruit or plain scone with one teaspoon of jam. Yes, so a scone with jam. They even omitted the cream. I don't know if it's the thing in Australia, but in the UK, you have a scone with jam and cream. But no, let's stay low fat because otherwise we get heart attacks. Savory treats, 30 grams of salt reduced pretzels. And we're scared of the salt now as well. Rice cakes or wheat biscuits topped with cottage cheese, tomato and chives. Yes, okay. But do you, have they even checked the glycemic index of rice cakes? As far as I know, most diabetes recommendations would kind of at least look a little bit on the glycemic index and try to keep that low. But apparently rice cakes, for some reason, don't count. A cup of plain popcorn. Savory bread, half an English muffin with tomato slices and one slice of reduced fat cheese. And reduced fat again. So do they even know that if you add fat to your meal, you will reduce the glycemic load? Which means that your body has more time to take care of the carbohydrates that is being released into the bloodstream now over time you will get all the carbs into your bloodstream but at least you won't get the temporary overload or as much of it as you would if you had some bloody fat in there this is just it's like this page is a recipe for developing diabetes what are you doing two toasted pita bread triangles with one tablespoon low-fat tomato salsa dip one small low-fat savory muffin, reduced fat cheese and tomato. Uh, two small sushi rolls, avoid using soy sauce. That is probably the best thing that has been on here so far. And the good thing with sushi is that the rice is actually cool and is more turned into resistant starch than cooked warm rice. So you might not I'm not saying that you're not going to get a blood sugar spike from it, but it's probably going to be a lot less than pretty much everything else here. And one small can of baked beans. <laughs> Who eats a can of baked beans? That is disgusting. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Thank God that list was over. So let's have a look at um, something else. Like what should I eat? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, let's not go. Oh, they have the glycemic index. Let's have a quick look at that. So the glycemic index rank, um, or oh, GI, I can't speak, ranks carbohydrates according to the effect on blood glucose levels. The lower GI, the slower the rise in blood glucose levels will be when the food is consumed. The effect may differ from person to person, yes. It is recommended that people with diabetes have moderate amounts of carbohydrates and include high fiber foods that also have a low GI. Uh, okay, I oh, haven't looked at the actual main dishes yet, but judging from the snacks, that is not moderate carbohydrate intake. 
and it was not low GI, that is for sure. Uh, some research has shown that by eating a diet with a low GI, people with diabetes can reduce their average blood glucose levels. Well, no wonder. This is important in reducing the risk of developing diabetes-related complications. Yes. Okay, so I wonder if we should go here. And you're not going to be able to see that now. I just have a quick look before I take you there and see if they have rice cakes. Just because. So I'm going to have to swap this quickly. Uh, show you the other one. <laughs> Right, so, yeah, so <laughs> rice cakes, GI, anywhere, uh, high amylose rice cakes. So these are some sort of high amylose, low amylose, probably some sort of extreme rice cakes either way. So let's exclude those and just look at these normal ones like puffed rice cakes, white, 82, okay, 82, K keep that. Um, number in mind here and we go back to the previous page <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to cry or laugh so 82 high GI foods are foods with GI greater than 70 hmm so why on earth are you recommending rice cakes as a snack you do you know I don't know. Are you trying to regulate the population in Australia or what is the problem? I do not understand. I really, really don't understand. Well, let's just amputate some more feet and do some kidney transplants and have people go blind because we think that you should be eating fucking rice cakes. Excuse my language. <sighs> okay, let's do it. What should I eat? Now I'm going to be upset probably. People with diabetes should follow the Australian dietary guidelines. But why? They are fucking awful. Eating the recommended amount of food from the five food groups will provide you with the nutrients you need to be healthy and prevent chronic diseases such as obesity and heart disease. No, they won't. Okay. To help manage your diabetes, eat regular meals and spread them evenly throughout the day. What does that even mean? five six times per day as everyone else is recommending we do actually just recommend breakfast lunch dinner which by the way wouldn't be too bad that could be all right for a single person but not if we're eating high carb <laughs> eat a diet lower in fat particularly saturated fat but it's like you're living back in the 80s that was 40 years ago, like check the current research and update your bloody guidelines. This is, uh, if you take insulin or diabetes tablets, you may need to have between meal snacks. What about taking less insulin or skip those bloody tablets if they are going to lower your blood sugar so much that you need to eat in between meals. Why not adopt a diet that will allow you to reverse your type 2 diabetes? This can be done really quickly for a lot of people. And we don't have to take medications or insulin. Now, if someone needs insulin, maybe they're a little bit further gone. Maybe it's going to be hard to reverse it in two weeks. But I bet you that they would probably be able to do that if they have some function in the pancreas and they would be able to live a very comfortable life, eating well without medications if they choose to. It's important to recognize that everyone's needs are different. Thank God, yes. All people with diabetes should see an accredited practicing dietitian in conjunction with their diabetes team for individualized advice. Read our position statement. One diet does not fit. Oh, that's going to be bullshit, isn't it? 
If you're interested in following a low carb approach, read our position statement, low carb eating for people with diabetes. We might have to go back and do that because um, now I'm interested. Okay, so boom, just checking what the time is. I've been going on for 35 minutes already. That's appalling. So maybe we're not doing that today because it's going to take a long time and you might be tired of me by then. Energy balance. Matching the amount of food you eat with the amount of energy you burn through activity and exercise is important. Putting too much fuel in your body can lead to weight gain. Being overweight or obese can make it difficult to manage your diabetes and can increase the risk of heart disease, stroke and cancer. Okay, let's not spend too much time on that. Limit foods high in energy such as takeaway foods, sweets, sweet biscuits, cakes, sugar sweetened drinks and fruit juice, lollies, chocolate and savory snacks. Some people have a healthy diet but eat too much. Reducing your portion size is one way to decrease the amount of energy you eat. Being active has many benefits. Along with healthy eating, regular physical activity can help you to manage your blood glucose level. Reduce your blood fats, cholesterol and triglycerides, and maintain a healthy weight. Hmm. Well, that could be discussed, but it's not the worst advice on this page. Or this website. Oh, fat, fat, fat. Fat, our favorite. Fats have the highest energy content of all foods. Eating too much fat can make you put on weight, which may make it more difficult to manage blood glucose levels. What? So I'm, if I'm fat and if I'm putting on weight, it makes it harder for me to manage my blood glucose levels. No. If I'm eating a lot of carbs, it will make it harder for me to manage my blood glucose levels. Uh, where were we? Our bodies need some fat for good health, but the type of fat you choose is important. Yes, we agree on that, but we just don't agree on what type of fat. Saturated fat. It is important to limit saturated fat because it raises your LDL, bad cholesterol levels. Again, do you still live in the 80s? Go and read the up-to-date research. There's nothing that actually says that this is true. What are you basing this on? It is criminal to sit there and make web pages like this and mislead people who will follow your advice. Unfortunately, my channel isn't big enough to reach all the diabetics in Australia, but I wish I could. I wish I could get in contact with them and let them know that, hey, you're doing it wrong. If you want to live a complication-free life and you want to reverse your diabetes, you can do so, but do not follow the advice on um, Diabetes Australia's webpage, because what they are doing is pretty much promoting diabetes and progression of the disease. Okay, saturated fat is found in animal foods like fatty meat, milk, butter and cheese. Vegetable fats that are saturated include palm oil, found in solid cooking fats, snack foods or convenience foods, and coconut products such as copper, coconut milk or cream. Mm -hmm. But a while ago I did a... Um, a video on animal fats equals saturated fats and it's not so much true it's actually you know maybe 40 percent saturated fat it's not like animal fat is 100 percent saturated that is simply not true to reduce saturated fat <laughs> oh god choose reduced Choose reduced or low-fat milk, yogurt, cheese, ice cream, and custard. Choose lean meat and trim away fat before fat, trim any fat off before cooking. Remove the skin from chicken, duck, and other poultry where possible before cooking. Avoid using butter, lard, dripping, dripping cream, sour cream, copper, coconut milk, coconut cream, and hard cooking margarines. Limit pastries, cakes, puddings, chocolate, and cream biscuits to special occasions. That has nothing to do with the fat. Limit pre-packaged biscuits, savory packet snacks, cakes, frozen or convenience meals. It's all carbohydrates. Do you even know what carbohydrates and fats are? Seriously? Like, get a proper list at least. Limit the use of processed deli meats. Devon Pol... what? Polony? 
I don't even know what that is. Fritz, luncheon meat, chicken loaf, chicken loaf? I've never seen a chicken loaf. <laughs> I'm just imagining what it would look like. Is that like a meatloaf, but a chicken loaf? I have no idea. Salami, etc. And sausages. Avoid fried takeaway foods such as chips, fried chicken and battered fish and choose barbecue chicken without the skin <laughs> and grilled fish instead. Well, we actually agree on that one. Deep fried food is like the worst thing you can do. Don't do it. That is so full of oxidized fats that will destroy your health. Avoid pies, sausage, rolls and pastries. Yeah, but not for the fat. Do it for the carbs. And you know, what it put in there, probably not high quality food, meat. Rather than creamy sauces or dressings, choose those that are based on tomato, soy or other low fat ingredients. Limit creamy style soup, soups. Okay, apart from, you know, anything that relates to, you know, pastries and cakes, biscuits, puddings, etc., that doesn't shouldn't even be on this list because that is carbohydrates. That is that's shock full of sugar. It has not hasn't got anything to do with saturated fats. And do the opposite, except for avoiding, you know, deep fried food because I agree with that. And then do the opposite of what they'd recommend, and you will actually do a lot better than the average diabetic. So you can start there if you want. Let's see, polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats. Eating small amounts of polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats can help ensure you get the essential fatty acids and vis vitamins your body needs. There's not a lot of vitamins in oils in general. Well, there's some, like E maybe. But to see that as a source of your vitamins, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, polyunsaturated fats include polyunsaturated margarines. Don't do margarine. Please, please, please save yourself. Sunflower, safflower, soybean, corn, cottonseed, grapeseed, and sesame oils. All of those are dangerous. And they are like, you know, mainstream, popular media articles all over, all over the place about the danger of these nowadays. So it's not like rocket science. This is real science that have actually become popularized, popularized enough for people to write about it everywhere. Everywhere. It's not. It's not a secret. Just don't do the bloody vegetables. They, they're going to kill you at some point. The fat found in oily fish, such as herring, mackerel, sardines, salmon, and tuna. Yes, do that. Monounsaturated fats include canola and olive oils. Some margarines, avocado. Yeah, sure, I'm all for avocados if I can find them cheap enough and if they are ripe. I love them. Canola, no, just don't do it. Olive oil, I do olive oil, but that is because I love it with carpaccio. I don't do olive oil because of any sort of health benefits. I do not think that you need to do olive oil, so I don't think there's going to be any huge benefit from it. It might even be some sort of disadvantage from doing it. Personally, I am doing it because of the taste. That's a calculated risk on my behalf. I'm still alive. Margarines, just just don't. Seeds, nuts, nut spreads and peanut oil contain a combination of polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats. Yes, so avoid them. Ideas for healthy eating fats. I'm not sure we're going to... Ugh. Well, I have to use linseed bread and spread a little canola margarine. <laughs> it's like have some bloody oxidized fat with your carbs so that you can get a bit more diabetic and we can just speed it up a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's not spend more time there. Carbohydrates, they play an important role in our diet. They are the best energy source for our body, especially your brain. When carbohydrates are digested, they break them to form glucose in the bloodstream. Insulin takes the glucose out of the blood and puts it into the muscle, liver and other cells in the body where it's used to provide energy. 
Most car carbohydrate containing foods are also very good sources of fiber, vitamins and minerals, which keep our body and bowels healthy. So this is a load of bull crap, isn't it? Your problem, if you're diabetic, is that you don't have enough insulin or you can't, or you're insulin resistant, so it doesn't matter how much insulin you have because your cells do not respond to it. So the best source of energy for you is fat because you don't need insulin to utilize the fat. You need to go low carb, get into a, stat, a state of proper fat burning so that you are really good at burning fat, both the fat that you eat and the fat that you have on your body. When you do that, you're A, going to get your A1C down, B, you're going, well, that's the same thing, but your blood sugar is going to be a lot lower, the insulin is going to go down, and your insulin resistance is going to reverse slowly. And voila, your the type 2 diabetes is going to go away with time. And then, uh, what was I going to say? C or something else. So if you, yeah, if you eat fat and you becoming a fat burning machine, as many people want to uh, talk about it, you're never going to be hungry. You are just going to be happy. You're going to have constant energy levels. You're going to be able to go out throughout the whole day. You don't need to eat six times per day. You don't need any medication. You're going to be pretty happy and feel really good after you have adapted to it, which might take a couple of weeks to kind of slowly get in there up until maybe several months. Okay. So of the three key nutrients in our food, fat, protein, and carbohydrate, carbohydrate, it's a nutrient that will have the biggest impact on your blood glucose levels. The effect of carbohydrate will, be, carbohydrate will depend on the amount of carbohydrate you eat and the type of carbohydrate you eat. Yes, but they're all carbohydrates and they just said it, that those are the ones that will have the biggest impact on your blood glucose levels. So that is what is causing all the disease. That is what is going to cause blindness or the damage in your kidneys or why you are getting nephropathy, um, sorry, neuropathy in your your hands and your feet, etc. It's because the blood vessels are dying and the tissue starts dying around and you have to amputate things because it gets damaged because of high blood sugar. So if you take away the damaging carbohydrates that are doing that damage, that is not going to happen. It will never happen. You don't have to worry about it. It's so simple. Why are we not telling people this? Um... Let's see. For some people, a lower carbohydrate diet may help with diabetes management. If you are considering reducing the carbohydrate content of your diet, consult your healthcare team for individual advice. You can read our position statement. Okay. Let's see what they say about meal timing. If you eat regular meats and spread your carbohydrate foods evenly throughout the day, you will help maintain your energy levels without causing large rises in your blood glucose levels. If you take insulin or diabetes tablets, you may need to have between meal snacks. Discuss this with your doctor, dietitian, or credential diabetes educator. <sighs> well, I just explained this. If you're a fat burner, you're going to have energy all day long, 24-7, no problem. What they are doing is that they want you to be a sugar burner. They want you to eat carbohydrates at eat every single meal so that you have energy, which means every time you eat, your blood sugar is going to shoot up and it's going to go down. You're going to be hangry and then you're going to eat again and it's going to shoot up and then it will go down and you'll be hangry again. And the insulin is following the blood glucose. So when the blood glucose goes up, insulin will go up. And every time it goes up, every time the concentration is high, you're doing damage to your blood vessels. Why are we still recommending people to do this we know that this is the problem we know that this is damaging there is no have however many carbohydrates per day it is damaging to go anywhere above what's the normal blood sugar if you're doing it consistently if you're doing it for a week or once a week or whatever no problem probably I 
Okay, and let's have a look at what they say about sugar. A healthy eating plan for diabetes can include some sugar. It's okay to have a sprinkle of sugar on porridge or a scrape of jam on some low GI high fiber bread. However, foods that are high in added sugars and poor sources of other nutrients should be consumed sparingly. In particular, limit high energy foods such as sweets, lollies and standard soft drinks. Some sugar may also be used in cooking and many recipes can be modified to use <clears throat> less than the amount stated on substituted or substituted with an alternative sweetener. Select recipes that are low in fat, particularly saturated fat and contain some fiber. So you have lung cancer, okay? Just smoke half a pack of cigarettes a day or maybe one if you used to smoke two, you know. Just don't do it as much and you will be fine. The, no. Sugar is what has caused this problem. And even for type 1 diabe diabetics, even if sugar isn't the cause, you can not metabolize it without medications. You can maybe metabolize it a little bit if you're type 2 diabetic in, at some, you know, to some degree. But as soon as you go too high, which happens very quickly, mind you, you're going to have problems. I don't know how many times I said that, but anyway. Then they talk about alternative sweeteners, which sure might be better for diabetics. But on the other hand, many of them, and you will have to test that for yourself, will spike your insulin. So if you're eating something with a sweetener, you're testing your blood glucose and you see that, you know, nothing happens then you know maybe you know or even if it's going down you might have an insulin spike but having said that it's really hard to know because um if you are resistant to insulin you might not notice it and it's just happening and that's going to be there it's going to do some damage because um, insulin is not all good Protein foods are needed by the body for growth and repair. Protein does not break down into glucose, so it does not directly raise blood glucose levels. The main protein foods are meats, chicken, fish, tofu, eggs, nuts, and seeds. Nuts and seeds are like fat, protein, and carbs. Cheese. Okay, so there are some protein foods which also contain carbohydrates such as milk, yogurt, lentils and legumes which will have an effect on blood glucose levels but these should still be included as part of a healthy diet. So, well, yes. No, protein does not necessarily, doesn't break down into glucose especially not if you have a lot of carbohydrates in your diet. That's not going to happen. It can undergo a process called gluconeogenesis, where we have using protein and turn it into sugar. But that is mostly done when you're not eating carbohydrates. So if you're eating what they're recommending you to eat, that is probably true. Uh, so no, it doesn't directly raise blood, blood glucose levels. However, proteins are insulinogenic. They will stimulate insulin release. They also stimulate glucagon release, which is pretty much the opposite of insulin. So that will kind of counteract the insulin and at the same time release carbohydrates from the liver, which could actually raise your blood sugars. So I wouldn't, you know, test, test, test. All you have to do is test. So do you want to have a look at recipes? Because I do. Oh, just want to see what was left there. Yeah, so let's do that quickly before we're done. <laughs> Breakfast, snack, light meal, lunch, entree, dinner, dessert. Okay, so we have lots to choose from. I want to... Low carb. Let's see what low carb they have. Low carb? This is not low carb. Why is it not working? Whoa, why is it not working? This is not low carb for sure. That's a low fat. Let's see if we can renew this bloody page. Okay, so apparently that's low carb. How is this low carb? 
Okay, let, let's have a look at what this is. Baked apple with berries, a seasonal low-fat dessert to be enjoyed with family and friends. Vegetarian, 300 grams of frozen mixed berries, 800 grams apples, cardamom pod, natural yogurt, low-fat, two teaspoons. This is not low-carb. It's actually on the low-carb tab. I do not understand what the fuck's going on here. Excuse my French again. This is not low-carb. Pumpkin is not super low carb, but let's have a look. There's a seller. Nutritional information. Carbohydrates, 11 grams. Fine. That's kind of okay-ish. 700 grams of pumpkin, baby spinach leaves, pistachios, avocado, red onion, basil, red wine vinegar, and black pepper. This sounds awful. What's the protein like? Five grams. So it's kind of like high fat, low everything else ish high fat moderate carb low protein it doesn't even say energy 18 and 90 kilos i'm not sure how many calories that is i can't do it maths in my head right now okay but that's actually eh, not ideal it's not a good meal let's put it like that it's not great walnut and raisin drops that sounds like very high carb to me Walnuts, cacao powder, a cup of raisins, vanilla essence. So per serving, carbohydrates, 7 grams. That's 8 servings, is it? A cup of raisins, 8 servings. It's like 2 servings to me. Which will be 30 grams. There's nothing else in there. 3 grams of fat, almost. So when we say low carb, what I'm thinking is that it's a food that contains very little carbs relatively to all or, the, or, you know, the absolute amount of carbs, no matter your bloody portion size, should be very, very small. Here, <laughs> so three grams of fat, seven grams of carbs, it doesn't even mentioned the protein but there must be some protein from the nuts but probably not a lot but literally I think about 60% of this or maybe 50% of this walnut and raisin drop is actually carbs 50 or 60 somewhere like that just from what I think <laughs> let's just um heart friendly what's that still we're warm and racing oh no we don't want low carb anymore uh, oh this is the favorite isn't it we had this one on the um, it's new zealand so butternut pumpkin soup i think there was just a pumpkin soup on new zealand but maybe they have the same bloody useless person doing their menus on both sides. Leek, garlic, uh, butternut pumpkin, potatoes. You know how much starch there is in potatoes? Uh, some chicken stock and then... Oh, yes, have some soy linseed bread. Why? Because it's soup. Okay, so 60 grams of carbs in one serving. what and honestly there's fuck all food here if i ate that and i'm not a big eater i would be starving as i'm saying so you know someone who's trying to be healthy following these recipes will probably end up eating like two portions of this or fill up with bread but it's very very likely because you know that soup probably t doesn't taste very good so bread would probably do and we can't even have bloody butter on. Have some margarine or canola oil spread or whatever it was. <laughs> I don't know. I want to go and bang my head against the wall right now. Curry dust and chicken with mango dressing. 
Okay, talk about being a little bit obsessive with the threes here. Do we need that many threes? Chicken breast fillets. Don't forget to remove the skin. Curry powder. 0.333333 cups of couscous. Half a fresh mango. <laughs> Have some fruit with your carbs. Half a tablespoon of ginger. 0.25 cups natural yogurt. Oh, it doesn't say low fat. Congratulations. Two tablespoons of pistachio nuts and 40 gram fresh coriander. Uh, I mean, it's not horrible, but seriously, there's no fat in there. And there's a little bit of, you know, one chicken fillet. There's some, some protein. Good. Just too much carbs. Why are we focusing on the carbs when you have diabetes? Diabetics need to eat differently than this. Well, everyone does, but especially diabetics. So I think um, I feel like I've been squeezing this one dry almost. Um, <laughs> this sounds like carbs with carbs. Rest is usually some sort of potato fried. So onion, garlic, diced tomatoes, cannellini beans. Oof. Sweet potato, I like that actually. Normal potato. An egg, yes, we have some protein. Whole meal self-raising flour, two tablespoons, and a small red onion. So, seven grams of protein, 25 grams of uh, carbohydrates, fat, six and a half. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm going to rest my case, I think. Let's go back to here. Stop the screen sharing. And you know what? I've been going on for an hour. I apologize for... Oh, I'm also melting away clearly on the camera, which I haven't seen. I um, apologize for going on. I wasn't going to go on for that long. I thought, you know, half an hour. But then I started to kind of be carried away with the stupidness of... And I'm doing it the other way. The stupidness of their bloody advice. I do not understand how an organization that is there to help people with a specific condition can recommend that, you know, that the people that are actually suffering from that, that they keep eating the very one thing that is actually causing the disease or the very one thing that is the problem here. The problem is that they cannot metab metabolize carbohydrates. So why are we asking them to eat so many carbohydrates? I can't fix my picture either because it's way too dark here. Um, as I said, I apologize for going on for an hour. That's what happens when things are not going according to plan. And I had to film during the evening, which I usually try to avoid because of lack of studio lights. So there you go. I just want to, before I let you go, if you want to support this channel, you can do so by actually joining my Patreon, and you can do that for just one dollar a month. I really appreciate every single dollar that would come in that way, just to support the channel and make sure that I hopefully can get some quality interviews coming over here, which will be super cool. This weekend I have uh, an interview booked in with them. Um, a fellow countryman of mine so that would be cool and he has been going on a carnivore diet and a lot of things have happened for him so I wanted to interview him to just you know see what's happened and he has some interesting stuff to share with you so that was pretty much all uh, thank you so much for your time it was awesome having you here and I will see you again this weekend for our normal Q&A slot bye